Welcome back, guys. Now, as you all know, over the weekend we had Charlottesville, Virginia. You probably already know the details, but just to give a quick rundown, there was a alt-right slash white nationalist slash racist slash, ah, it's just called a far-right protest. And they have some valid complaints and some completely insane ones as well. But the valid complaints are the fact that they feel like they're being marginalized and pushed aside and villainized. And, and, and yeah, I, th I think that's, that's pretty valid. But then there's some other shit that they say that's completely invalid. Like, we want only people who are white to live in this country. And we got to kick all the other ones out. I mean, that's pretty stupid. So, anyway, they, they decided that they wanted to um, unite the right. Which is, which is hilarious because I don't think everybody on the right wanted to go to that. Still, it was a pretty large gathering, and it was mostly peaceful until the counter-protesters showed up. Now, by counter-protesters, I mean Antifa. When Antifa showed up, they decided to get, as usual, violent. Of course, the far right decided to show up prepared for this, because they've learned to do that, and they outnumbered the hell out of Antifa. Also, it's Virginia. I can't imagine that there's a hell of a lot more Antifa in Virginia than there are far right people. But I digress. Things got violent, but nobody got hurt badly. Until a gentleman decided to drive his car into a group of Antifa, killing one person and injuring 19. So, the narrative I'm hearing from the middle, the less insane portion of the media, meaning YouTubers and bloggers and so on, uh, they're saying the far right only exists because the far left exists. You are the reason that the far right exists, they're saying. Antifa is the reason that the alt right exists. The National Socialist Party only exists because the Communist Party exists. That's basically what they're saying. So every time, every time there's a fight and the alt right uh, and the group surrounding it, and Antifa and the group surrounding it get together and they beat the shit out of each other, the way this, the way the narrative goes now, the way the theory goes is. The only reason these two groups exist is because one of the groups is so abhorrent to a majority of the people that they feel that they have no choice but to join this other group on the far other end of the spectrum. And and I can see where that looks like it's um, it's probably got to be true, right? But my problem with this is it takes away individual choice. Now, yes, I think that if you on the far, far left are making the far left look absolutely insane... When you're saying that actors are the ones who control the minds and the hearts of people all around the world. And and if you aren't in line with us, you're a Nazi, you're a transphobe, you're a racist, you're a lavaphobe, you're a sexist, you're a misogynist, whatever. You know, if you don't like feminism, you're a misogynist. Just just all this other shit. If you're saying all that crap, I can, I can look at it and go, yeah, I probably wouldn't want to agree with anything they have to say at that point. Because they... They're demonizing me, they're demonizing people I'm like, they're demonizing the things I like, and they're ruining things I like. I mean, look at Marvel, look at look at Netflix, right? Look at YouTube, look at Patreon, look at all the things that we like to look at for entertainment now. A lot of it is being ruined by people on the far left. I mean, hell, it, <laughs> they're taking down things that they think are, are terrible. GoDaddy just decided to say to uh, Stormfront to go, basically, you know, we're closing down your site, go fuck yourself. Why? Because they're far right, and GoDaddy doesn't like them. That's that simple. It really is. Now, I don't give a shit. I don't particularly like Stormfront. I think Stormfront's, um... I, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's like The Onion, but with a hell of a lot more hate. But, you can see it. You can see that if you're looking at the situation, you're going, man, everything's crumbling, everything's falling apart, I only have one choice, I better join the other side to fight it. And then, of course, you start listening to the rhetoric of the other side, whatever side that happens to be, and you go, oh, man, uh... Everything that they say is true. It, it turns out that there really is a huge difference between uh, races, and that, that means that we should get rid of other races, because otherwise our country's going to go to shit. And this group of people over here have been running the world for this long, and, and on and on and on, because you've joined a group to get away from another group, and now this group that you're in controls itself. It polices itself. There's an in-group and an out-group. Well, I got news for you. If you join the all-right because you really hate Antifa and the progressives, Antifa and the progressives joined the progressives and the Antifa and all that shit because they didn't like you. They were scared of racism. They were scared of white supremacy. I mean, regardless of whether it's actually there or not, regardless of whether it was actually there when they started to get scared of it and, and run over to the left and say, let's bash the fash. Even if there was no fascists around, the fact is that their motivation is the same as yours. They wanted to get away from a group. They didn't want to be a part of a group. And so they join another group, which polices itself and has an in-group 
and an outgroup. I hope you see what I'm saying here. The left and the right, the far left and the far right, in any case, are very similar. They actually are almost identical. Both sides are religious in their own way. Both sides police themselves. Both sides have their own stack, their progressive or conservative stack that you must be measured by. Both sides play collectivist politics. Both sides use identity politics to police themselves and to insult or end conversation with the other side. Both sides refuse, really refuse, to talk to the other side. They'll talk to the middle, sometimes, but both sides really don't like the other side, so much so that they will beat the shit out of each other and now kill each other. In fact, as Sargon pointed out in one of his, uh, his recent videos, I think it was uh, This Week in Stupid, he actually pointed out that, you know, the only difference between the two sides is that one side sees white people as good and one side pe sees white people as bad. Both sides are racist. Both sides are incredibly racist. Except the left sees the white people as the worst people on the planet, and the right sees white people as the best people on the planet. And then their entire ideology basically flows from that. And so, of course, yes, both of them are going to have ideologies which are incredibly similar. Fascists, for instance, usually have a supreme dictator, a supreme leader, somebody who tells the rest of the entire nation how to act. And so the state becomes all. Individual freedoms are, are stripped away to make sure that the state and the empire, the imperium, endures. Whereas communism and socialism has a supreme leader. Individual freedoms are stripped away so that the state can survive, so that the motherland can survive. They're exactly the same. They are exactly the same, except one hates white people and one loves white people, or idolizes white people. And so, like I said, the skeptics, or the non-far-right and the non-far-left people, they look at this and they say, yeah, for sure, if you are going to be putting out this progressive narrative and saying that white people are terrible and so on and so forth and everybody's transphobic and everybody's racist and everybody's sexist, then people are going to have no choice but to become far right. You're going to push people away into the far right. And um, like I said, I, I think I agree with that up to a point. What they're doing is they're making the far left look completely insane in the same way that the, the alt-right and the far-right are making the far-right look completely insane, because both of them are. And there's going to be people who are just emotionally drained, and they need somewhere to go, they need something to believe, they need some set of principles to adhere to. And I'm here to say that I had that choice. I could have stayed progressive, become even more progressive. I could have flipped sides entirely and become conservative. And instead I went, you know what, both sides are fucking nuts. It's not like, and it's not like I don't have principles. Of course I do. It's just both sides are absolutely fucking insane. I would have no problem if they just, tomorrow they woke up and they had amnesia. The whole lot of them, every fucking last one of them, just woke up and they just forgot who the fuck they were. And they didn't even know their names, just like, oh, what the fuck, I don't even know where I am. And then their whole family and them, they just had to deal with it. They just had to become a whole new person. Just they recover their memory in like three or four years, you know. And they just, for the next, like, for the next term of presidency, they just straight up didn't even remember who the fuck they were. They'd be fine. They'd be totally fine with me. I know that sounds terrible, but seriously, they'd be fine with me. I, I think that the idea right now is that if the progressives don't stop being completely, utterly batshit insane, then we're going to have a growing far, far right. And if the far, far right doesn't stop being completely batshit crazy, but fucking sane, then we're going to have a growing far left. And that is a possibility. That is a possibility that it will escalate and continue to escalate. But there is another possibility, and one that I hope that people will actually start taking as an opportunity. And that's just being sane. That's just being a normal American or a normal Western person. You believe in free speech. You believe in the right of individuals. You believe in not hurting someone else. You believe in li living and let living, you know. You believe in defending your own, but you believe that you shouldn't have to take shit from other people, as in steal shit from other people. You don't believe in communism. You don't believe in fascism. You don't think either one of them are good. You just think the democracy is just fine. Democracy and the republic are just, they're fine. They're fine. They're not perfect, but they're fine. And you prefer to sit down and talk with somebody rather than run them over with a car or stab them. That group of people who think that are huge. It's the biggest group of people in this country. It is the biggest group of people in the Western world. And we're the ones who have to step in and clean up after this shit. We're the ones who have to step in and clean the streets, paint the walls, put in new windows, repair the cars, bury the bodies patch people up. We're the ones who have to drive the ambulances, we drive the taxis, we drive the buses, we 
We paint. We have to restring fucking uh, wires. We're electricians. We're carpenters. We're skilled laborers. We are the fucking proletariat by any other name. And we're not Marxists. We're not communists. We're just working people. We're the middle of the goddamn spectrum. And we're the ones who are going to have to stand up and go, oh, this is bullshit. Stop it. Both of you fucking assholes. Stop it. So if you're thinking about joining the left or the right, I encourage you to take a step back and think about joining the middle or joining anything else other than the far left or the far right. Because they're going to end up killing each other again until we step in and stop them from killing each other. That's it. We're the ones who are going to end up having to break up the fight, as it were. We're the ones who are going to have to sit there and look at the people on the far right and far left and go, okay, you've you've had your moment, you've had your 15 minutes of fame, now it's time to shut the fuck up, sit the fuck down, and talk to each other like adults. And then enforce it. Mainly, though, it's going to end up having to be us who holds the city councils and the mayors and the governors and the commissioners responsible for not going in there and beating the crap out of both sides and getting them to stand down. It's going to be us who have to stand up and go, this was bullshit, this never should have happened. You had riot cops, they were available, you know what happens when you have a protest from the far right. The far left shows up, Antifa shows up, and starts shit. Every time. And it has been going on long enough in this country and in other countries to know exactly what's going to happen before it happens. There's no reason this should have happened. It's going to end up having to be us. Because left sitting there, the the far left especially, is just sitting there going, oh, it's the far right, it's their fault. It's only one side and it's their side. They're the ones who are to blame. And the far right are going, fuck that, it's the far left. They're they're the ones to blame. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't even have to be here. And we in the middle are like, seriously, you're both fucking crazy. You're both crazy. You don't see the whole picture. You're absolutely childish and you're full of shit. So if you're already in the middle, if you're a classical liberal, if you're a normal conservative, if you're a centrist, if you're a person who doesn't believe that running somebody over with a car is a good idea, if you believe that it's not actually a wonderful idea to have political violence, congratulations, because now's your time to step up, start speaking, start talking. Tell your local congressman, your local congresswoman, your local senator, whoever they happen to be, tell them that you're tired of the shit. Tell them you're tired of people becoming terrorists. Tell them you want the police to start stepping in when there's a when there's a violent protest. Tell them that you want them to step in whenever there's a chance that Antifa will show up. Especially tell them that you think Antifa is a terrorist group because they absolutely are. Tell them that if you think um, if you think the far right is a terrorist group, any part of the far right is a terrorist group. Tell them you think they are too. Give examples though. Don't just be a jerk about it. It's pretty easy to find some examples of Antifa being very terroristic. Um, I don't even know if that's an actual word. Very, very much a terrorist organization. It's pretty hard to tie too much to a far right group right now. Guys, if you're in the middle, you're in the right spot. If you haven't started hurting anybody, if you haven't decided to be violent, politically violent yet, you're in the right spot if you're in the West. You're doing the right thing. But if you wanted to keep doing the right thing, you have to start speaking up. Because people think that it's going out of control. The only people who are going to be able to say, no, it's not going out of control, you're just idiots. It's going to be us. That's it. Because the right's not going to stand up and go, gee, we were really fucking stupid. Our Tiki Torch Brigade didn't really seem to work out. And the left's not going to go, hey, we were really dumb. We probably shouldn't have wore black and then beat the crap out of people. Neither of them are going to stand up and go, we were dumb. Neither of them. The left now has, the far left now has a, a martyr. And they're going to rally behind her. And the far right now has, well, they have proof, don't they? They have proof positive that the establishment doesn't like them. Because all of the governors and all the mayors involved in this shit are saying, especially Bernie Sanders, congratulations, Bernie, uh, way, to, way to bring the whole nation together. <sighs> They're saying that, you know, the only the only reason there was a protest at all is because of white supremacy and bullshit like that. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of racists there. <laughs> there are plenty of racists there. I've seen the videos. There was a lot of racism there, for sure. And a lot of stupid shit going on, even before Antifa showed up. No violence but plenty of stupid shit. But it doesn't help when a governor or a mayor says there is no problem with the left, it's only on the right, which is the actual problem. We won't listen to each other, and now people are killing each other. So how do we solve this? Well, we can either keep killing each other until someone else with a bigger gun steps in and says, fuck it, stop it, I'm going to kill you both. Or we can stop killing each other and start talking. Start listening to each other. Start asking questions. Start answering questions. Start answering concerns. And we in the middle are going to be the ones to stand up and tell people like Bernie Sanders and tell people like the mayor of uh, Charlottesville and tell people like the governor of Virginia, you need to start listening to both sides. You need to stop demonizing one side. You need to stop dividing us. Grow up. 
preferably before we all end up dead. 